Hello everybody, welcome back to Creating Hanley. I am Kimberly at Creating Hanley and behind this uh, OmniGrid is a star block that we are working on for December. We made it to the end of the year guys, December 2023. So this is our final star block. However, I do want to back up a little bit. I'm putting this this star before the November star. I do have a November star coming, but I wanted to do this one first because I just wanted to do, I've been wanting to do this for months. So anyway, this star is called, I've seen it called present in a star block. I've seen it called Christmas star block. I am calling it gift box star because you don't have to have it in Christmas colors. You can put it in whatever colors you want. Now, I already made the star, and I did not follow a pattern. I just looked at a picture, and I recreated it. This is almost 12 and a half inches. That's why I had this up, because you can see a little bit at the bottom. It's not, it's a little bit shy right there at the bottom of 12 and a half inches. So, and a little bit uh, on the side here. It's a little bit shy. Of 12 and a half inches so that means either um, make your blocks just a tiny bit bigger or measure probably better than I did most likely measure better than I did um, and also you can add a border you can always add a border around the edges here now what I've done is I've taken these little stickers and I put the measurements on these little stickers. So let me see if I can do this without them falling off. So there, there's the star. So gift star box, or gift box, gift box star block. Gift box star block. Now you can see the gift box right in the middle here. Now I will take off these stickers, but you can see the gift box right in the middle. It doesn't have to be Christmas colors. Folks, you can do whatever whatever you want. It's a gift box. So you can do this at any time of the year. You can make, um, you know, in, birth, in birthday. You could do it in a child's favorite color. You could do it in, you know, whatever, whatever you want. You could put dogs in here. It doesn't matter. So um, let's get right down to it. Okay, so now I just told you I did not follow a pattern. I just looked at a picture that I really liked this. Um, star block and I recreated it myself. So I think I did a pretty good job not following along on any pattern if I say so myself. But I am gonna give you some instructions. So um, it's relatively easy once you, once you figure out what the units are. Okay, now there are four, corner, four corners. So you can see the white that I chose, the background fabric is in white. I chose my star in red and then I had the same coordinating red ribbon here. And then the gift box or the present in the middle here is a different color to contrasting color. To, I made it very dark. You can do whatever colors you want, but this is what I chose. You don't even have to have these two, these two things match the outside. You can have this a, a completely different color. Okay, so you can have three or four different colors if you want. I have three, you can have four if you want. Or you can even make these two different ones, but it has to look a little bit cohesive like it is a gift box, right? That's the present, um, the gift part of it, okay? So now I made the white background, or you know, my background white, and I chose, I don't know if you can see, I chose um, like red little kind of gilded, gold and then maybe you can see the snowflakes on here but anyway um because it's december here in the usa i chose christmasy kind of colors christmas theme um you don't have to um so anyway these four corners three and a half inches so make these four corners three and a half inch square blocks okay so actually, I don't know if I showed you this. This is my drawing. This is what I did. So I saw a picture online and then I took my graph paper and I just uh, made my key up here. So this is a one inch block. So I kind of recreated a 12 and a half inch block. And, and this is how I made my own pattern. And then I just kind of figured it out. And so I did this, this is my little um, planning 
book right here, my planning. And then I just put some, you know, numbers down to see how this would work. So I actually did it from the outside in. So I created these flying geese right here first. And I knew this was 12 and a half inches across. So it's relatively easy to figure out what the blocks should be, what the units should be, when you know the end size. So I wanted this to be, actually I wanted my finish to be 12 inches, a 12 inch block. When it goes into, into the quilt, it should be a 12 inch block, but unfinished it would be 12 and a half. So I know that every one of these should be um, like an extra half inch um, for seam allowance. So a quarter inch on each side for seam allowance. But I know that I want to cut, not finish, a cut three and a half inch block. So in here, it's going to be a three inch because it's finished. Um, now you can see it hangs out over the side a little bit. That's the extra quarter inch that's going into the seam allowance when I put it into the quilt. But let me get you right to the directions here. Three and a half inches. So you need four three and a half inches because you have four corners. It's a square. Uh-oh, I dropped one. Let me go find it. Oh, it is three and seven eighths. Okay, three and seven eighths I know is part of my, and I color coded it green. I know it's part of my flying geese. So now if you look at this, you have four flying geese up at the top. Um, right here, this unit is a flying geese unit. This is a flying geese unit and this is a flying geese unit. So you have four flying geese units. Now, you will have a fl four flying geese, no waste if you do this measurement. Take your background color, make one square seven and a quarter inches. Seven and a quarter inches. Whoa, you can't even see that, all right? One background, seven and a quarter inches, and then make four three and seven eighths. One seven quarter and four three and seven eighths. Okay, and that's how you make your, because you have two, four, six, eight. So you need four of those three and seven eighths squares. Now I, I have a video on how to make flying geese. I will try to stick that right around in this area right here somewhere on the video. You can go to that video and see how to make flying geese. No waste, four at a time. Otherwise, um, if I can't <laughs> seem to edit and put that in here somewhere, then I do have a video on how to make um, the perfect size right here. Okay, so no waste, four flying geese units. So once you make those, now you've had, you have your outside done already. Now for the inside, and this is kind of how I just kind of winged it a little bit, but I knew I wanted a border and I, and I figured I wanted an inch. An inch is a little bit too big. Do you see how big this, this is an inch. This unit right here is one inch wide. See how this is one inch wide. Now, do you see how this, this border is a little bit narrow. This border is a little bit more narrow. I think all four sides should have been this size. And that kind of comes out to about a half an inch or maybe three quarters of an inch. So what I did was I cut, I cut um, one and a half inches. So I cut one and a half inches and this is six inches long finished. So you want six and a half inch strips, two, six and a half inch strips by one and a half inch wide. Is that what I have here? Yeah, six and a half inch strips by one and a half inch wide, okay? Six and a half inch by one and a half inch wide. You only need two of those. Now, um, because I kind of like fudged it a little bit, I just, I was just kind of winging it. I wasn't really sure, but I made these four and a half inches long and I should not have done that because if I wanted this box, this present to be a little bit wider, four and a half inches was confining. So I couldn't go any any wider than four and a half inches. So I kind of screwed myself there. Now I could have just scrapped that, that fabric because it's just a little bit and just cut new one. But I already cut it and I was like, let's just go for it. 
So that means that your box is going to end up, you know, that this size. So um, you have two by four here, two by four here. So that's a rectangle. Two by four, two by four, cut those, all right? And then this middle ribbon is going, you wanna cut one and a half by four inch. Um, four inch or four and a half? I have it one and a half by four, but you might wanna double check my math on that because these should all be the same. Well, yeah, if this is two by four, then this is one and a half by four, yes, okay. Now you can play with that a little bit. If you wanted this ribbon to be more narrow, then these are a little bit wider and you can even go a little bit wider if you eat up some real estate in your lateral borders here, okay? So you can play with this a little bit. Um, now this, these two little units right here, these two right here, these two little, little pieces on the side, cut two, one and a half by two inches one and a half inch wide by two inches. That'll give you plenty of real estate that if you make a mistake, you, you can eat it up in the seam allowance. So a lot of this is gonna be um, kind of a little bit extra fabric. So if you do need to like give and take a little bit in the seam allowance, you can do that. You can play with that. This is one and a half, no, I'm sorry, one inch by four. So these two top and bottom, um borders around the gift one one inch by four and a half and then this is a flying geese unit kind of but it's not the same as this so what i did was i made a rectangle three and a quarter inch three and a quarter inch by two you can't even see that three and a quarter inch by two inches and then i just cut two two inch squares and then when you do that when you cut, so say like I have, so say like this is the the um, rectangle part. I just take the other two pieces and I create, actually when you sew it together, you're gonna sew it like this. Now look in the flying, If well, it's not gonna be quite the same in the flying geese. But anyway, you wanna take your fabric and kind of do, um, Ooh, got fabric right here. And kind of, you know, make it kind of like that, okay? Kind of like that. Now, if you guys want to see how I did this, it's just a it's just a flip. It's just a what did they call it? Um a strip and flip or something. <laughs> anyway, um you want to uh this is probably the only part I need to show you, really. Um but so you're going to snowball, basically, is what you're doing is you're snowballing these corners, kind of snowballing the corners because it's not even, it's a whole side. Anyway, stare at it for a little bit. Does that look like, does that look like something you can, now I, mine's a little bit wonky because I, I didn't do it quite right and this one got a little bit out of control. <laughs> it got a little bit big and then it got lost in the seam allowance. I kind of made it wonky uh twisted a little bit i didn't mean for that to happen um but it, but it kind of did so i wasn't going to worry about it because this was an experiment like i said i didn't follow a pattern but anyway once you have all those pieces so your uh, flying geese units first and then once you have those you have the whole outside done and then you can put your gift box together so you put these three pieces together and then you create this little unit right up here, put that together and then attach these two side panels to that. And now you attach this piece to this piece. So attach that together, right? Attach that together. And now you have your gift box unit. And then what I did was because I um, had limited fabric this way, I put, I attached the top and the bottom borders and I made those line up perfectly. And then I put the sides on. Now I had to fudge it a little bit because I didn't measure the same way that I told you how to measure. So I kind of just made it work, but it worked. And then you put these, because you can see, 
this overlaps this, right? So you put these on first and then you put the two sides on. Now you have your inside unit. And then you put these three units together. You put these three units together. And then you put these three units together. A unit, a unit, a unit, right? And because you made your gift box, that's a whole unit. A unit, your flying geese, the gift box, and the other flying geese unit. So it's basically a nine patch at that point. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So once you create your flying geese, easy. This is the little bit more fiddly part, but this becomes a unit and now you have a nine patch. And there you go. And then you just put that together. Good luck guys. Um, if you want to see anything like, sh like how I do the gift box or you wanna see how I do the flying geese, I'm pretty sure I did a video on the flying geese. Check that out in a playlist somewhere. <laughs> on my channel um or find another person who did a um, tutorial on how to make flying geese four at a time no waste um and that you know might be helpful for you um so if you want to see anything like how I put this all together I'm happy to put a video together on that however I was just playing by playing by numbers basically and I wanted to do this um, on my own kind of make a template and it almost made 12 and a half inches so I'm pretty happy about that I did you know maybe I cut something wrong a little bit like because down here right maybe I cut it a little bit wrong or I took up too much fabric in a seam allowance which is quite possible so but anyway there you go all right have fun making making this and good luck and i will be back with another um november <laughs> star block and then we are going to put all of our stars together to create our so a year full of stars quilt all right you guys have a good one take care see ya bye bye for now